So a new feature we just recently added uh, is the ability for a partner to create their own DLC up to up to 10 pieces. So on the same page on the DLC section here, if I hit add new DLC, and we can give it whatever we like here, give it a name. Zombies are always fun. So it just created me an app ID for my DLC, which is pretty important. So we can have our app ID here, which I'll probably need to copy that somewhere. Uh, it added it to the partner group that I'm in, and it also created some packages as well. So we've got our developer comp package created here. Then there's a store and retail package, which we can use to sell or, or make keys from that could be sold elsewhere here. There's some store items created, so if I wanted to edit the store page, I now can do that. So we can close this now. So the difference on the technical side when making DLC is, unlike before, we kind of just made whatever depot IDs that we had available. Before we actually make DLC, we have to have that app ID, which we just got. So let's go back here, back to the depots tab now. And again, the other thing is, uh, aside from hitting Add New Depot, we'll be hitting Add DLC, and it should just automatically show up here. And there it is. Select that and hit OK. And then hit Save Changes. And now we'll go to Publish That. So got all my depots to find. Let's create a depot script for that. Uh, the other thing with DLC is the depot ID that you'll be using for your DLC is almost always going to be the app ID as well. So it's basically the same thing. So I want to use this number as my depot ID. And then let's have it point to my DLC folder. And then modify the app build script again. And this time I'll just put them all back in there. So now I've got the app build script already on the build. And there's all my depots specified now. Make sure that seems just to contain the one file in my DLC depot. So I'll set this to the testing branch. And if I restart Steam again, you can see it's already gonna do an update. Uh, this is because I already automatically own the DLC you can see here. So it's already going to be downloading that. So for cases where I wanted to test uh, not owning the DLC and then simulate purchasing it, probably one of the easiest way to do that is to start by removing the content from my game. And then back to the console tab, there's two commands you can use for DLC specifically, or, or really any package that you owned through the Steamworks site. And that is disable and enable license. And 
uh, licenses and packages on Steam are the exact same thing. So if I go back here, I want to see what my DLC is. Go back to its associated page. I can see that my package is 43430. So if I type specifically disable license, I should now no longer have the DLC, which we can hopefully see here. Yep, my DLC list is now empty. I go to install the game. can see that I've got no DLC files in here. So then, if I wanted to simulate purchasing that, I would simply call enable license. And I'm also currently out of the beta branch, I'm guessing, yes. But I can see that I now have this, so if I opt back into that, There we go, I've got the DLC. So with DLC specifically, if you've got cases where your DLC does not need its own depot, then you can kind of ignore uh, at least the part of making the build script and all that. You know, if you've got uh, the files already on disk and you're just doing a, an ownership check, then you won't need to do a build specifically just for the DLC. You know, it'll just be included in your regular game. So now that I've tested my DLC and I think it's all good to set that live, uh, the main thing I'd have to do now is to make sure that it's obviously in my default branch. Once I do that, then at this point, it's really, uh, it's up to the DLC to be set live on Steam. Now that Jason is done getting all the content ready for the DLC and it is tested and ready to go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go and show you how to get the store page ready and uh, actually launch the DLC in the store. So we'll see we have our app Steam Pipe Tutorial Zombies right here. And I can go here, here and click View Checklist. When I click this, uh, I am going to see what I still have left to do. So it looks like I need to set a release date. I need system requirements, I need pricing, I need a, at least one screenshot, and my capsule images, and then my support information. So let's go ahead and do that. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and add my pricing by clicking on my package. Um, we go into more detail on all of this in the how to edit your store page tutorial. Um, so if you have uh, questions about any of the uh, editing the store page or um, pricing, This is uh, that's where you want to go and look. So I'm going to quickly suggest pricing. We'll say this is a $2.99 DLC. Save my pricing, and then that will be sent to Valve for approval. I can also now go backwards by just clicking Package Details, click the app. Now I'm back to the landing page, and it shows that new pricing is pending approval. I also need to set a release date. Let's go ahead and update this. Let's say we're going to ship this on the 28th of November. And um, my time, choose any time I want. This is going to be Pacific time. I'm going to say it's going to go at 10 AM. If I wanted a launch discount, I could do that here, but we're not going to do one in this case. And I could download my calendar invite if I'd like. All right, next, we're going to go in and set the system requirements. This can all be done here. All right, I can go ahead and save that. If I wanted a coming soon page, I could put that in here, but I'm not going to do a coming soon page. I can add in that it has English, it's action, RPG, and single multiplayer. The base game has the achievements. And we'll go ahead and put in our support contact. All 
All right, now that that's saved, I will go ahead and drop in a description. And I'm going to go ahead and save here. It's a good measure to just save each page as you go, just to make sure you don't miss anything. All right, then I want to drop in my graphical assets. You will need one screenshot minimum, and you'll need a header, a large cap, and a small capsule minimum as well. Um, and then uh, trailers are optional. If you had a reason for a trailer, for example, it's a big expansion that you should be showing some sort of gameplay or something. Um, that would be a good idea. Um, also, in the case of soundtracks, it's great if you can put in some sort of a, um, even if it's a screenshot with music in the background, a little samples of what the music sounds like. Um, it's a nice thing for customers to hear, but it is not required um, that you have that. All right, now my capsules are uploaded. I can see them below, and they have their nice little DLC banner on there now. And uh, now, i deciding I'm not going to do a trailer. Special settings, I could add a um, Google Analytics tracker if I'd like. Um, and then if I go to the Publish tab, it's going to tell me that it's not been published to all users. Once public, you'll be able to release incremental updates. So I need to go back to the checklist. And when I get back here, I see that my checklist is complete, and it's telling me I can mark it ready for review. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it ready for review. And it will be reviewed by Valve. And it looks like my pricing was approved and everything as well. So um, then I'll log back in in the next day or two and um, be ready to publish this live. All right. A day later, I log in and I look. And it looks like I have view release options, just like I had for my regular game here. So I'll click on my Zombies DLC. Valve has looked at it and said that it is ready for release. And then I have this new nice button at the top where I can, I'm approved for release. I can click prepare for release. And then at this point, it's going to give me options. If I had more than one package, it will let me choose which packages I want to publish. Uh, in this case, I just have one. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave that selected. And then if I click publish now, the DLC will publish and uh, be in the store. So that is it. I'm not actually going to publish it because this isn't a real game or DLC, but, uh, um, but that is how you would publish it to public. And then after that, you can go in and edit the store page and things um, as you like if you need to do updates and things like that. Uh, after I did that, I would probably go and think about posting an announcement and uh, announcing the new DLC in the Community Hub, uh, which is a great way to let your customers know that the DLC is now available. That's it. I hope this was helpful. And um, as al always, if you have questions um, in the partner site, go up to the documentation and help area. Uh, that's a great place. As well as you can go in the upper right corner, there is the Get Steamworks Help, which will take you to the Steamworks Development Group, which is also a great place to ask questions and get answers from other developers as well as um, employees from Valve. I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned to the Steamworks Development Group for future tutorials.